It's famous for its vibrant culture and love of life, and it's one of the world's most popular destinations. But in 2020, Spain went from tourist mecca to COVID central. The country has lived through three waves of the virus and lost tens of thousands of citizens. Almost six months ago, I left the safety of Australia to move to Spain right in the middle of its worst crisis in a lifetime. It's been an extraordinarily hard time for this country. At times, it's been confronting to watch. Lockdowns have crushed businesses. The economy is devastated, but they're fighting back. Little by little, a little bit here, a little bit there, I have hope. And I have trust that I'll be able to clean up debts and do something new. Will the Spanish soul survive this year of loss and rise again? The virus continues to spread through Western Sydney's Newmarch House. Lily Mayers is there tonight. Lily, what's the latest? Jeremy, this morning we learned another resident within the home has died after contracting... I spent much of last year covering COVID in Australia. There are now 7,320 cases, but as a journalist with Spanish heritage, I was struck by how much faster the virus was spreading in Spain. I made the huge decision to pack up my life and go there to report on the pandemic. I arrive in Spain as the second wave of the virus is peaking. We're driving from the airport to our Airbnb and seeing Madrid for the first time. There's people out on the streets at restaurants and cafes, people walking around shopping. Apart from the masks, it's hard to tell that there's any crisis happening. But despite appearances, there is ongoing tragedy. The day after I arrive is All Saints Day, when families mourn their lost loved ones. And this year, there's an ocean of grief. The coronavirus death toll has just hit 35,000. Spain locked down hard when the virus first hit, but over summer, people dropped their guard. Hola, chicas. <laughs> I'm catching up with Elena, a young entrepreneur I've just met in Madrid. Hello. She and her friends Diego and Galit are all in their 20s, working by day and going out every weekend. Young people who ignore social distancing have been blamed for spreading the virus. Do you agree that people, the young people, have exacerbated the problem? or are they being unfairly targeted? During the summer, there were probably no restrictions, so there was a little bit of people going out and um, big gatherings of people. So I do agree that we probably have something to do with the second wave, but um, I wouldn't say we are the only reason or even the main reason about it. Yeah. But we always say, let's do something, let's have fun, let's, let's enjoy life. And we, we don't realise that it's important, actually. How has coronavirus affected your lives? Has it changed the way you live at all? We have to enjoy yourself, but with a level of consciousness, of course. But we have to enjoy our life. I know that friends that they live with their parents, they're more worried than, than us. I live alone, I live with a friend, so I'm like, I don't care because if I get the coronavirus, maybe it gets, I'm really bad, but it's not going to affect my family. There's one group of people who can't afford to be cavalier. 
In early 2020, health workers were applauded every night across Spain. But inside hospitals, it was like a war zone. I've come to know a young resident doctor, Susanna Pardo. Susanna is finishing another 24-hour shift in one of Madrid's biggest public hospitals. She was on the front line in the first wave. Pacientes se acumulaban en la urgencia de una forma escandalosa. No había ni siquiera sillas para ellos en los pasillos y tenían que sentarse a lo largo de toda la planta. Muchos de ellos, además, venían muy malos. No teníamos bombonas de oxígeno suficientes, que igual les dejabas con la mascarilla de oxígeno o, o las gafas nasales. Y cuando volvías a verles después de horas, te los encontrabas muertos. Pues aquí, en estos días de marzo, abril, igual morían 20 al día. O sea, es, es incomparable con nada de lo que he vivido anteriormente. Llorar en el metro, llorar con mis amigos, con mis padres, por nada. Eso me pasa mucho. Y hay gente, eso que conozco, que está de baja por depresión, por ansiedad. Es bastante frecuente ahora. Yo he tenido la conversación con muchos de, de, de mis compañeros en los que estábamos diciendo que me encantaría coger el COVID para estar ahora de baja en mi casa dos semanas, porque necesito desconectar un poco del hospital y de, de, del, del trabajo que hago. Es absolutamente repetitivo, es agotador y además emocionalmente pues, eh, mina mucho. Despite working long hours, junior doctors in Spain earned very little. At breaking point, Susanna joined a union strike group to fight for better conditions. Susanna led negotiations with senior officials, but there's little progress. We found ourselves waiting in another foyer with our 14 bags. Away from the front line, life can seem pretty normal, even as restrictions come and go. As one of the few foreigners moving here, I'm surprised and sometimes a little embarrassed to find I'm in a privileged position. <sighs> well, this is our new apartment. We feel incredibly lucky to have found a place like this. It's notoriously hard to find a secure apartment like this in the middle of the city. It's even harder to find one that's got a balcony and views of all the beautiful buildings in the city. The only reason we were able to get it is because it was an Airbnb and with international tourism dropping so much because of coronavirus, the owner was pretty keen to get a tenant in long term. Tourism used to account for more than 12% of Spain's economy and it's all but ground to a halt. I've been given permission to travel to Barcelona to see how it's faring. Hola. This is how it looked before COVID. The historic centre was packed with tour groups. The locals called the old city Disneylandia and wanted tourism reduced. Mm -hmm. 
Now, that's just a memory. Totally, Gaudi wanted everything to be organic, to be flowing, and what we have up there... Rizzi Nickel has been a guide in the city for 12 years. She hasn't had a single day of work since last March. She's agreed to give me a tour of the new Barcelona. We're standing in front of Sagrada Familia, which you have behind me, the sunshine. Uh, usually, this would be packed with people. We're talking about almost five million people a year coming to Barcelona just to see the site behind me, this Sagrada Familia, this unfinished church. So before COVID, could you ever imagine seeing Las Ramblas so quiet? No, to be honest, not. Usually you were just trying to avoid people somehow steer through, and now it's actually quality walking, we could almost say here on the Ramblas. But before COVID, locals here were complaining that they couldn't come to places like this because it was too packed, too unpleasant to be with all the tourists. Have they got their wish now? It is the typical saying, I think, of careful what you wish for. Because on the one hand, we do see more locals kind of reconquering spaces that they were driven away of because there's nothing catering to them. On the other hand, obviously, there's the whole economy behind that moves the city as well. And to come down to the city centre and see half of the shops empty is not what the locals wished for either. Rezi takes me to a popular street in the old town where 80% of bars and cafes are closed. So what are all these shops being closed going to mean for Barcelona's culture and economy? I mean, are they, is it going to be able to recover? Who knows? Let's hope so. Rezi used to finish her tours here at Garriga's Kitchen, a modern Catalan restaurant that was thriving before COVID. But then came the first lockdown, known as Confinamiento. Helena Garriga has already closed one restaurant and is about to close her second. You can see we have all our family stuff hanging in the wall. After the second Confinamiento, we decided not to reopen again because it's, it's, it's just uh, inviable. It's, it's almost impossible to reopen. How difficult has that been for you and your family? It was a very, yeah, it was a tough decision to make. I had dreams. I thought it was going to be possible to make it again. But now, after seeing uh, what everything is happening, I, I think it's time for me to stop fighting and reconsider my business mm. and maybe go back to the origin, to this mom and pop shop selling bread and wine and tomatoes. Mm. The Spanish government's job keeper style scheme helped pay the wages of some of her employees. But she still had to let go of 20 staff. With customers disappearing, the debts have kept growing. What else has the government done to help small businesses like yours? Well, they've given us uh, 1,500 euros. In total? Yes. So were you disappointed by the lack of help from the government? Very, very disappointing. It's very disappointing uh, it, because it's impossible. It's many businesses like me are going to die. It's impossible to survive. <laughs> At home, Helena's husband and former chef Olivier invites me to help prepare one of the restaurant's specialties, butifara. Just leave, leave it, it'll, it'll With peel off. Yeah, and. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. The sharp downturn in the family's income has meant that even a middle-class family has had to get help to pay for school fees. What about the school community? Has there been assistance from them 
at all? Yeah, they have a fund. They told us the kids still can go to school, and um, that was true. And you know, it's it's finishing in in uh, February, uh, but at least we got like uh, a good amount of help for half of the year. Going into the new year, hopes and dreams in general. We lost. Uh, you know, all those big dreams of making like, you know, uh, 10 restaurants or 15 restaurants were like gone. Let's take another route. And then we usually break the uh, sausage, uh, the white pork sausage on it. Uh, but we're going to separate them for the, the sake of, of, of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> As a vegetarian in Spain, there are always awkward moments. Cheers. I finish my evening taking in Spain's most passionate dance. Nothing stirs the blood like flamenco. Performances like this are increasingly rare. So many venues have closed that even the most famous dancers are out of work. This is renowned flamenco artist Cream Amaya. Before COVID, she danced for seven hours a day seven days a week. That life is now gone. What have been the physical effects of not dancing on your body and on your mind? Muchos, muchos efectos. Mira, lo primero es que engordas, coges kilos, porque yo, yo estoy, mi cuerpo está acostumbrado a una actividad brutal. En el momento que paras, todo te sale. Dolores de rodilla, do, la espalda, eh, todo, todo. Ha sido brutal y bueno, Físicamente, muy malo ha sido el, el efecto. Without the income from performances, Karime has struggled to survive. To earn money, she teaches dance classes online. Nunca antes en mi vida había tenido una etapa tan dura. Soy joven, tengo 35 años. Pero creo que esta, esta etapa no la olvidaré nunca. Ha sido muy duro. Y tampoco tenía ahorros, porque yo he sido una persona pues, que he vivido con lo que tengo. Like many flamenco artists, she's found a way to channel her suffering into her work. Con el baile sacamos todo, las tristezas, las penas, las alegrías. O es una forma de terapia que nos sirve a nosotros eh, en nuestro día a día. As the holiday period begins, Christmas shoppers are out in force, but there's a sense of uneasiness. As if by magic, the new year brings something beautiful and unexpected. For the first time in half a century, Madrid is blanketed by heavy snow. It's a welcome break from unrelenting bad news, but as people enjoy it, social distancing is forgotten. 
Across the country, there's also a fair amount of anticipation at the moment. Daily case numbers are staggeringly high again, and doctors think there could be even more infections out there untested. In fact, some are saying we're already in the third wave of the virus. I've heard through a friend that Elena, the young entrepreneur I met when I first arrived, has caught COVID. How are you going? Fine. Well, at home, obviously. Yeah. But fine. yeah. The last time we sat down and spoke, you said you wouldn't care if you got the virus. There's two ways of seeing this pandemic. It's that you can go out and know that you are going to get infection once. It's the most probable thing that can happen. Or staying at home all day. I chose the, the option of going out, spend time with my friends. So I knew that it was probably... It was so probably that I'm going, I was going to get the infection. If we don't socialize, we are going to be really sad and we are not going to, to have life. So Elena tells me her friends from the cafe, Diego and Galit, would like to catch the virus. So they're both asking me if, if, I, if I'm well, if I have symptoms, and if not, that I'm so lucky. They want it. Yeah. I don't but get because, but why? Everyone of my age wants wants to. Because if you just go through this, it's once, it's rarely twice. But you just go through that and you go out without fear or you're not afraid of anything. It's the second week in January and nearly 53,000 people are now dead. It's a huge jump from when I arrived in October. Hola. Soy Hola. Lily. Buenos dias. Dr. Susana Pardo is now working out of a four-star hotel. With hospitals at capacity, hotels are unofficial wards for the milder cases. No se ha llegado todavía al colapso que ha habido en las veces anteriores, pero sí eh, se nota muchísimo la, el aumento de casos. There's hope a national vaccination drive will lend some protection to frontline workers like Susana. Y en mi servicio ya llevamos el 80% del servicio vacunado. En general, la idea que se tiene, yo creo, es que esto va a suponer o esperamos la solución. Por lo menos va a contribuir bastante. Pues ya me han puesto la vacuna. Me encuentro genial. Así que nada, estoy muy contenta. I return to Barcelona to check in on restaurateur Helena Gorriga. Hola! ¿Qué tal? I find her a changed woman. It's cute. Yeah, it's cute. Although she hasn't been able to reopen her restaurant, she's launched a new business selling specialty food products and it's really taking off. So we made cannelloni and we sold like 100 cannelloni last week. The order just kept on coming. Do you feel a bit more in control of everything that's happening in the situation at the moment? Well, I, certainly I feel uh, like a lightweight inside of me because uh, when I didn't know what was going to happen with, with, with our, our business, it, you know, it's a, if it's a heavy feeling, you feel like, oh my God, what's going to happen to my professional life? And um, since December, that I saw that it is possible to still be in business. Yeah. So, yes, I think that we'll, we'll, we'll manage mm -hmm. to survive. <laughs> Hola. Hola. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estáis? Helena still has faith in her country. With the circumstances that we live in, in this terrible pandemic where people are losing jobs and family members and just everything is going wrong, the Spaniards have inside of them this amazing way of just moving on and, and enjoying the moment.
the artistic community is also finding its way. Triple A is an association that provides food for artists in need. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you. I meet up with Karime, who's volunteering with them. For her, the struggle continues. And unless flamenco venues reopen soon, she worries the art form won't survive. Es un lugar donde la gente puede ver flamenco pues puro tradicional. Y sí va a ser un gran problema que que esas familias y esos artistas puedan seguir trabajando de lo que llevaban haciendo toda su vida, ¿no? Could you ever imagine your life not dancing flamenco? forma parte de mí, no 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 me lo imagino. Realmente, donde sea, como sea, pero seguiré bailando. Back in Madrid, spring is in the air. And for the first time in seven months, case numbers are dropping. Hola. Hola, ¿qué tal? Gracias. Susana Pardo can finally see an end to the nightmare, but she's not optimistic the government will improve conditions for junior doctors. La verdad es que por parte del gobierno, como se dice aquí dando largas, están estirando muchísimo los plazos y nos están desgastando mucho, la verdad. She's so disillusioned, she's not sure she wants to continue working as a doctor. En el trabajo estoy simplemente pensando en cuándo va a terminar mi turno, cuándo voy a poder volver. Y sobre todo en terminar la residencia y, y ya veré qué hago. Porque la verdad es que ahora mismo me replanteo mucho si no tendría que haber hecho otra carrera. Porque no estoy contenta con mi trabajo, desde luego. La verdad es que ahora mismo me gustaría estar en otra posición en la vida. COVID has exhausted this country, and it's not over yet. But here in Madrid, people are enjoying the moment when they can. The food markets are open. People come out to shop and to socialise. There's such a strong need for connection and normality. I've always been inspired by the beauty here. Now, I'm in awe of the people, their strength, their warmth, and their endurance. Thank you.